Now, I would like to introduce to you next someone who is very special to WISE also. Someone who has spent his professional life with a mission to educate. He co-founded Pratham, which is not just one of the largest NGOs in India, but also one of the most trusted. His mission began amid the challenges of Mumbai's poorest communities, where he wanted not just to get every child into school, but also learning well. And that goes to the heart of what we've been hearing about the balance between access and quality. But his concern with quality education was also finding a way to assess quality so that there was a real benchmark to measure what was actually happening in the class. So I'm delighted to welcome now to the stage this year's Wise Prize for Education Laureate, Dr. Madhav Chavan. Your Highness, Your Excellencies, and uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, belonging to this uh, global community of innovators in education. I want to start first by congratulating Her Highness for creating WISE and placing it right here and moving the discussion, debate, thinking and action uh, more towards the south and towards the east where according to Hans Rosling, uh, the world exists, not just the developing world. This is where all the population is. I say this because you heard in the panel today, and I'm happy that Carol Bellamy is, is here, and Yara said that too, is this whole thing is about contextualization. It's about creating our own solutions. And so, I'm reminded, you know, when I started working, some people asked me, why are you reinventing the wheel? And I didn't know the answer to that question, but I knew that it had to be done. And I think after 18 years, I'm convinced that everyone has to reinvent their own wheel because paths to progress, development are different in every country. We are made differently, our histories are different. And so all this, all the education that we want to provide to our children has to grow from our own soil. And so I want to thank you again for bringing this whole initiative towards the south and to the east. And I hope there'll be much more innovation, much more solution finding and much more action uh, in the south and the east from now on. I want to thank you for bringing us and putting us putting me personally on the center stage here today. Thanks to you, now my friends are calling me the wise guy. Um, but this actually gives an interesting global profile to what we are doing. Uh, what we were doing was known in the educational community, but this is a, a different kind of an honor. I can see that many people are coming up to me and wanting to discuss things. Um, and I was reflecting on that because we equate education with knowledge a lot in, in the developing world. It's all about knowledge and less about skills. But again, Carol said it before I did, education is not only knowledge, it's not only skills. I think it's about being wise about wisdom as well, which is lacking. I don't know about moral education, but that wisdom is something that is important that doesn't necessarily come with knowledge or skills. So why is this very appropriate, Your Highness? I stand here quite humbly. I know you, this is an individual prize, but I stand on so many shoulders. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank some of the people, which I didn't get on the very first day. Um, I think I stand on the shoulders of my family. 
My two grandfathers were interesting people. One was an entrepreneur, the other was a man of justice and a, a firm believer and actor in social reform. My two grandmothers brought up big families and they were very wise women. My mother was a very creative teacher, very popular with her students, and my father, a political worker committed to the working classes. All this definitely, and his, his friends and colleagues, they brought me up. I say this not only to thank them and to remember them, but I think sometimes we forget what role the community, the social environment, the family plays in a child's upbringing. I know it's popular to say that uh, it takes a whole village to educate a child, but sometimes we forget what that means. And so I see the stress going back again and again and again on the school, and we forget that the child learns through the complete environment. Again, Carol, thank you for saying it before I did. You cannot leave education, she said to educationalists, I'll say it's not only about the school. I go further, Pratham people go further and say, you cannot leave education. Education is too important to be left to the government alone. It's about people also taking charge. We have to educate our children. And so it's important that we take the initiative, not wait for anybody. You can't wait. If it was your child, would you wait? You wouldn't. If your child could not read, would you wait for the teacher to start teaching? Or would you roll up your sleeves and say, let me see what I can do? I think it's important that we take these initiatives. These are some basic lessons that I've, I've learned, we have learned at Pratham. There's so many people who have contributed to our growth, to my growth, without the time, talent, and trust that I received from literally hundreds of people and my colleagues now, this just wouldn't have been possible. We wouldn't have reached where we went. But the fundamental lesson in what we've done is start walking, keep walking, and don't give up. I think it's, it's, everybody knows this is not a new thing, but you learn it again. This is about life's lessons. It's about starting to do things, setting goals. Very often we see in the developing world, governments do not have definite goals to reach. And that's why, while we equate access to education with access to schools, actually we find it is not. Access to education has to be about access to learning. You can have a school and have no learning, but if you can, if you don't have a school, you can still have learning. I think we know that. It's important to just get going. There is so much to be done. And uh, yesterday somebody was asking me, I'd like to end with that little thought. I don't really have a lot to say because so much has been said in this conference. Somebody said, what message do you want to give as the wise prize winner? And I said, I really don't think I can give a message. I'm not old enough to do that, perhaps. And then it occurred to me, maybe it's just something that you have to express your feeling. And I, I hear that feeling in the audience. I heard it when some people were speaking. Uh, it's taken too long. It is taking too long. It's about time, like the theme of this uh, summit is, that we start working together and get it done. We can't leave it for the future. It has to be done today. Thank you. Dr. Madhav, thank you so much for what you said. Um, it's such a fitting way to bring Wise to a close to hear from someone who's worked um, right at the grassroots the way you have. You said it's not about knowledge, it's not about skills, it's about wisdom. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can see he is the wise guy for a reason. Our Wise Prize for Education Laureate 2012, Dr. Madhav Chavan.